Hi, my name is Tegan. Today I'm going to be taking you through how to make a cloth book based on an applique quilt pattern from Shiny Happy World. I absolutely love the Shiny Happy World quilt patterns. Wendy has put a great amount of detail and love and thought into the patterns that she provides. They are amazing to follow and her instructions are so clear that even if you have no experience, you can easily put one of her quilts together with her helpful tutorials along the way. I love using the patterns and seeing what you can make with them other than what you can put onto a quilt. Her website has some great ideas already of what you can do and I'm adding another, a, a cloth book. These are a great gift to give, especially to new babies. We've recently had an influx of new babies in my family and I've loved giving each one a lovely little book as their first present from us. For this project, I'll be using the free applique Christmas patterns. Our latest edition arrived on Christmas Eve, so I thought the Christmas patterns would be just perfect for this little one's arrival. So, the supplies you're going to need to do this project. Some lightweight interfacing. You will need a small amount of cord batting. The fabrics of your choice. I love making these tactile as the baby grows, they can play around with the fabrics. You do need to be mindful of the age that you're giving these to, so for me there'll be no buttons or anything like that that could potentially come loose as these are quite little babies that are going to. I'm using quilting fabric, minky, fleece, felt and flannel for these, but your sky's the limit, you can really do whatever you like and I love how, this, I love how much Wendy's patterns allows you to get as crea creative as you want to be. You'll also need your adhesive for applying your shapes onto. Wendy has a great video tutorial on how to actually start using the adhesive for applique if you've never done it before. I highly recommend looking at that tutorial. I'm using the just the sheets you can buy from your local craft store. There is also an amazing product that you can get that you can print directly onto the outside of this direct from your computer to printer. It is awesome, but sadly I've run out of that one, which is why I haven't used it for this, and I've had to go the old fashioned way of tracing. And then you're going to need your patterns printed, ready to go. So you either print them onto the uh, transfer paper ready to go, or you'll need to cut and trace them out. The next video is going to show you how you're going to print out these patterns and at what size. Given that Wendy's patterns are based for a quilt, we do need to shrink them down a little bit to fit onto a cloth book. So over to the computer and then I'll be back with the next set. All right, so we're now ready to print out our patterns, ready to start making our cloth book. So you'll need to go to the Shiny Happy World website and navigate to the free patterns section. And here you'll find a whole heap of different patterns that Wendy has for free. What I'm using to make the Christmas book is Jolly the Elf, Mrs. Claus, Rudolph and Santa. There is the snowman applique pattern as well. I've chosen not to use him purely because it is summertime for us at Christmas and given that it was a 40 degree Christmas for this year, or well, last year, I should say now we're in 2019, the uh, snowman would not have lasted very long at all. I've also printed out the bear, bib pattern, just the bear portion rather than the whole bib because I've we need six pages, as I said before, to make our cloth book. And the elf, Mrs. Claus, Santa and Rudolph only make up four. So we need, I needed two more blocks to make it work. So I've picked a Christmas tree, which I just found a clip art image for here. And I've just pasted into a Word document and I'll print that out. And then I'm also using a present. Now the present's just a simple square, so I don't need to print a template for that. I'll just cut it straight out of the fabric using my rotary cutter. But behind my present, I'm going to have a little flap and make something hidden. And I decided that this bear would be really cute to have as hiding behind the present. So I'm going to print him out as well. So for the purpose of the tutorial that I'm going to be making, I'm not going to go too much into the steps on how to actually applique on fabric. Uh, Wendy has an amazing library of tutorials on her website available to anybody to use, no purchase required on how to applique your fabric from cutting it out and fusing it together if you've never done that before, which is this one right here, uh, to complex steps on how to actually outline stitch your applique using different specialty fabrics and things like that. So I'm not going to go too much into detail on that when I'm doing mine, purely because she's done such an amazing job, I couldn't do it any better. So 
if I'm doing something in particular, I will refer back to a particular tutorial that Wendy has if you want to get more information on how to do it. Uh, this one I do highly recommend if you have not worked with fusible adhesive before. She recommends using a, go away, Ed, a recommends using an applique that you can print onto. So you can put it into your printer, print out your shape and then fuse it straight to your fabric and off you're ready to go. I'm currently out of that awesome stuff at the moment. I used it all up making a dinosaur quilt for my son. So I don't have any left. So I will have to print and trace mine out, which is also fine to do as well if you don't have any, but I do highly recommend getting some, particularly if you're not as confident with applique before, using those sheets takes all of the tracing out of it. It makes it so much easier to work with as well. The other point to note, because I'm actually using words on the front cover, I've got my Christmas book. If I was printing this directly onto the printable uh, adhesive fabric, I would need to have this reversed. It would need to be, the letters would need to be back to front uh, because otherwise it will, you'll have the reverse printed out on your fabric when you actually go to put it on and that's not what you want. But I'm tracing this out so it doesn't matter that mine's facing the right way. I'll just make sure when I trace it, I trace it back to front. So that, so that now brings us to, oops, have what size we need to have our shapes at to use in the book. So as I mentioned before, the book will have a finished size of eight inches. So we have around a seven and a half inch square that we're working in to leave yourself extra border room just in case some of your stitching goes a bit wonky along the way, which mine has done previously. It just gives you that a little bit of extra breathing space to work in. So right now, these shapes are designed to fit on an 11, 11 and a half inch quilt block. So these are going to be too big straight off the bat to use. We need to shrink them, which is super easy to do. So in your uh, PDF of choice that you use to open your files with, you'll need to go to file, and to print and it will bring up your print box. What you want to do is go down to this one here that says custom scale and we want to change it from 100% and this is where you need to fiddle a little bit to get it right for what the project that you're working on. Some may need to be smaller than others depending on the pieces that you're using. On average I'm finding for an 8 inch finished cloth book most pieces need to be scaled at around 70%. Some may need to be smaller. It really just depends on the size of what you're using to start with to determine what you need. And you may need to play around with that a little bit to get it right for you. So at the moment, I'm just gonna to stick to 70% and then I hit print and my printer will then do the work. And I do that with all of the pattern templates that, I've, that I need to use. So if I go over here to my folder, I've got them all saved under Christmas. I would open up Mrs. Claus and I'd print at 70%. Remembering that you're only printing out the template pages, don't worry about any of the others, we just need the template bits. If you're printing it directly onto the fusible fabric that or adhesive, whatever we want to call it, that you can just iron straight onto your fabric and go, you've got an, one less stop to do if you're doing what I'm doing and printing it and tracing, you'll need to do that first and then adhere it to your fabric. And then we'll be ready to start piecing together our book. So I'm going to go ahead now and print out all of my pages and trace everything off and I'll be back with you shortly to go through the next step. Alrighty, I'm back. I've gone ahead and I have cut out all of my pieces. So I have my Santa, the elf, Rudolph, the base of the present, my Christmas tree, Mrs. Claus, and I have my title. So the next step you want to do is to cut out this fabric that you're going to actually put your pieces onto. So you can you, you need eight squares in total. Those squares need to measure eight and a half by eight and a half inches. This will make for an eight inch finished book using quarter inch seam allowance. You can use the same print for the whole thing or you can mix it up. So I'm using this candy cane print for my front and back covers. And then I have a blue and a red for the squares on the inside of the book. So to actually put a book together, I've made a little diagram to make it easier to see how it actually goes together. You want to sew them as sets of two. Now when the book actually goes together, it doesn't quite follow a logical sequence that you would think because of the way the book folds. So the cover actually goes on the right hand side and it makes sense when you actually sew it, this line that you see going down in the middle becomes your book seam to basically turn it into a book. So the cover needs to be on the right hand side. 
then we have the back cover is its pair. The next row down we have page one, so this blue here would be page one, and then page six. So my page six becomes this red square. They go together as a set, and then as a four, these would be sewn together. We then have page three, sorry, page five and page two. So this becomes page five, this becomes page two. And then we have page three and page four. These two being the middle of our book. And they are sewn together as a set of four. And I'll explain that a bit more when we get up to it. You can basically do any combination of pages that way as you like. So this is a 10 page book example. So we have our front and back covers. We start with page one and page 10. So this 10 being the last number page in my book, one being the first, and then alternates. And you can start to see a pattern. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this basically repeats. As long as you have enough that you can sew a full set together, you can keep going on. So the next one would be a 14 page book if you chose to. I find six to 10 pages is good. It's plenty big enough for a baby. I wouldn't want to go any bigger than that because it does start to get a bit thick, particularly if you are using lots of different materials like I am, like I have my fleece here. There's some felt mixed in here. So depending on what kind of fabrics you're using, we'll make it bulk out a little bit as well. So for each square that you have, you want to cut a piece of interfacing around eight inches. It can be bigger and it just leaves that little line around it. The reason for doing this bit of interfacing is because we are doing a lot of applique onto these squares, I don't want them to change and stretch. So I use just that little bit of interfacing on the back to help keep it smooth. Just lightweight interfacing, nothing too fancy, just a small square. So I've gone ahead and I have done that to all of my pages. The next thing I'm up to is going to be working out the order of what I want to go on each square and appliquing that all on together. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to applique each square just individually and then I will come back and show you how to put the squares together to start building your pages. Alrighty, so I've now gone ahead and I have appliqued all of my pages. So, and I've also put these little markers on to hopefully make it a little bit easier. So I have my back cover, my front cover with my Christmas book on the front. Santa is our page one. This present becomes our page six. And there's a little Velcro bit here that shows the uh, bear inside my little present and this ribbon can be undone. Then we have Mrs. Claus for page five, a Christmas tree for page two, the elf is page three, and Rudolph is page four. So now what we want to do is sew these pages together. So to do that, we're going to start with our back and front cover and they need to be sewn together with this quarter inch seam on this side. I'm just going to put this over the top and you line up your edges and you want to sew a straight quarter inch seam down this side. For the next book, for the next page, we're going to do pages one and six together. And again, so six goes on top of page one. And we're also going to do a quarter inch seam down this side, but we're going to leave a turning gap in the middle of this set. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the cover together and page one and six. Remembering we want to leave a quarter, a, I don't know, two to three inch gap in the middle of this page. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be back. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and I have sewed a quarter inch seam down the middle of my cover pages and I have done the same to page one and six and I have left a gap in the middle if I can find the gap. So that's it there. So on the reverse, you wanna make sure you're eyeing your seams open. This just helps to reduce the bulk and makes the book sit nicely. And it also makes your hole that you've got closed up. This gap is actually going to be our turning gap because what we're actually essentially going to do to make our book is this. So these then go together and that's how the pages will turn. So we have our cover, these pages are together, open, open. So this gap helps us to turn our book through. 
So we're going to do the same thing for these pairs to sew them together, but the, this time we're going to have our gap on pages five and two. The reason for that is when we actually sew these together, these pages will be like this. So as this is our middle page, we don't want to have a seam in the middle. We want it to be on the back where it can't be seen. So we're now going to go ahead and sew pages three and four together with the quarter inch seam all the way down. And we're going to do pages five and two with two on top, quarter inch seam down the side, leaving our turning gap between these two pages. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've gone ahead now and I have sewn all of my pieces together into sets of two. So I have my front and back cover completely sewed down with one full seam, pages one and six with the turning gap, pages five and two with my turning gap, and then pages three and four sewn together with the full straight seam. So now what we're going to do is start constructing our book. So you want to get your sets ready to sew. So in this case, the first one I'm doing is the back cover and the front cover together with pages one and six, and they go on top. Oops of each other like this. So what we're doing at this step is basically going to base them together because the final step will be putting them together with the quilt batting. So all you wanna do is baste these together. It just makes it that last step of sewing around with the batting that bit simpler because you don't have to worry about your layer shifting. These have already been sewn together. So you want to pin them, make sure you match up your seams here in the middle, make sure they're Seams are all lined up together so it sits nicely with your book and you're sewing together with a, about an eighth of an inch of your seam because our full seam allowance is a quarter inch so you want to be doing smaller than that so that way you don't see your uh, basting lines when you go to put it together. So these go together and then I'm going to do the same thing with these ones right sides together as well. Making sure that the turning gap is what's on top because then we'll sew these together on top of our quilting batting next. So I'm going to go ahead and baste all of these together with a scant quarter inch seam between one eighth and a quarter inch and I'll come back. Alrighty, so I have basted together my sets. So I've just done a short seam all the way around the outside. So they are now completely sewn together. I've got a little gap over there where my linings didn't quite match up but that's okay because it'll all be encased in the next step. So now what you want to make to do is to put it together as a final step. Now if you wanted to you could skip the batting but I do like it in there because it does make it last a little bit longer and make it that little bit sturdier but if you didn't want to put batting in you really don't have to at this stage you could just turn it out right now and stitch around. If you were going to turn it out now rather than having it's with the batting then you would have needed you need to do a full quarter inch seam around instead if you're skipping the batting but I do highly recommend putting the batting in so I have my batting here now your batting needs to measure the same size as your finished two pieces sewn together so it's roughly about 16 and a half inches wide so sorry 16 and a half inches long by eight and a half inches wide roughly now it can be bigger it just can't be smaller if it's bigger that's not a problem you'll just sew your quarter inch round using the edge of your book as your guide and then trim off the excess you want to make sure when you're putting these together that the turning hole is up so the batting is on the bottom like this and the turning hole is on top the reason for this and this is very important ask me how I know. When you sew your full seam allowance around this entire thing is going to be encased. The only way you have to turn your book out is this turning hole. So if it is this way, I can get my fingers to manipulate, yeah. If it's this way and you've sewn your entire thing around you have no hole to access and you'll either have to unpick your outside bit to turn it or you'll have to unpick this middle seam and we do not want to do that. So make sure you pay attention as to which side is face up and know that the gap with the turning hole needs to be face up in front of you, the other side is on the batting. 
and then you want to go around and pin the whole edges which I have done to this one so I've made sure my turning gap is in the middle I can stick my finger in there there it goes so my finger can go in and now we want to sew a full quarter inch seam the entire way around and you're going to do that to both pieces once you've done that we're up to the final step of putting the book together we're nearly there Okay, so I've now sewn all the way around my book. It's probably a bit easier to see it from this side. So I've sewn the whole way around at a quarter of an inch. I've probably come a little bit too close here, so I might actually go back and re-stitch that bit just to make sure it doesn't pop open. And then I've done the same thing to this one. So all of these are now stitched out, ready to go. So I'm gonna put that one aside because I need to fix it. It. Now's the time to go and trim and clean up any edges. So if you've got any overhanging in bits here like I do, just go ahead and trim that off. Always being careful not to cut into your seam allowance. Then you want to take a pair of scissors and just trim the corners off. Remember you can hit the first stitching line, just not the second. So I'm just going to trim my corners. And now we're ready to turn our book out. So very carefully reaching. Yep. And turn the book out. Once you get a little bit through, it starts getting a bit easier then to pull the rest. Out. There's one side. You see I've got my Santa out. Let's get this side out now. There we go, come on. Slowly. Alright. Okay, so it is now out. Very poorly, but it's out. So now what you want to do is to get a tool of some kind and go in and push out all of your corners and then you want to give this a really good press. So I'm going to go ahead and fix up this one where I had a bit of dodgy stitching. Also once you've turned it out make sure that you've got all of your seams in place. You don't have any holes other than our turning hole and I will come back. So I'm going to go ahead and fix up what I've missed. I'm going to turn them both out and give them a good press and pull out my corners. Okay, so I have now turned out both my pages and I've given them a really good press. My turning hole is still here from this front one and then so I've got my two pages on this side and they're reverse. Sadly my reindeer had an unfortunate encounter with my iron because I did not have a cover on top of it. So one of my Mickey ears is slightly scorched. So note to everybody, make sure you actually put something over the top of your work when you're ironing these special fabrics so you don't scorch them or turn your iron down. It is useful. Okay, so I have now gone around and I have sewn edge stitched all the way around both of my sets and we're ready for the very last step which is putting our book together. So what I like to do with at this point is to use a little bit of sewing glue so I just use a sew line glue pen and I use it to help shut this seam here. Now you really don't have to because what we're actually doing with when we sew the book together will be to sew right down this middle bit. So this seam that we had open is actually going to be encased by our stitching that we do in a moment. I use the glue just to give actors a little bit of an extra barrier and to help close it in and make sure that it's not going to shift and move around. So that's my main reason that I choose to use a little bit of this sewing glue. It just helps keep everything nice and neat and fixed into place. And you won't even really be able to tell where our join was. So I've just put a little bit of the sewing glue. I use sew line. So it's just this little pen that comes with the refill, which is awesome. Now what you want to do is to make sure you've got the order again correct. Oh, there's a loose thread. Let's get rid of that. And again. Okay, let's fix that. All right, so I have my cover, which goes down. So it's facing down. 
it was sewn together with, with the Santas. Then this was my page that had the join in it, so it is going to go face down on top, and then I'm then I will have the middle in the center on facing up. So this one had no joining seam in it, this one had no open seam in it. What you now want to do is match up as best as you can your center lines so that they're even as best as you can. I use Wonder Clips, they are awesome, particularly going through all these layers. And do the same thing here at this end. All right, and that is mostly even. And now what we're gonna do is go over to the sewing machine and we are going to sew a line from here to here. I go over it a couple of times just to add some extra strength. So I'm just gonna go over here to my sewing machine and do that with this. So starting in the middle, purely because it starts to give your machine a good bit of grip to actually get going on, rather than trying to start on the edges. That's my, what are you doing machine? My machine didn't like it before. I'm going to hand turn this bit because I don't think my machine's going to like it much. Yeah, no, it's not going to like it at all. Alrighty, there we go, it's in enough. Turn it around. I'm going to hand turn it again just because it's not going to like it. This is where the bulk of that seam was before, so it's just not liking how thick this is. So I'm just trying to give it a little bit of a helping hand. There we go, and now it's back across again. That really is the most trickiest part, it's just that bit there, just because there's a lot of bulk on that part of your seam. But it is quite easy to do once you get through that part. Which is why I also say to iron your seams open because it helps reduce your bulk. Alrighty. Thinking about it, thinking about it. Okay, and back into the center again. If you had a walking foot, this would also be a good time to use that. I should have thought of that earlier. Come on. There we go. Alright. So I think that has been sufficiently stitched. It's not going to come apart now. I'm roughly back where I started from. Bit of a back stitch. Okay, and that's ready to ooh, come out. So, snip, whoops, snip. Okay, so let's move this back a bit so we can see our project. All right, turn it the right way. Okay, so now I would need to, what's that? Oh, wonder clips is underneath there. What is all that bulk? Okay. Alright, so now I just need to fix up my threads. I use a, for all of my, where I need to bury threads, I use a self, whoops, where's my camera? Self threading needle. So it's got a little gap in the middle of the eye, which just lets you put your thread through. Rather than trying to thread it, it makes it nice and easy. And I can just bury my threads and snip. Okay, so the book is now sewn down the center seam. I just had to do a little bit of fixing on mine because, as you can see here, it went a little bit bunny on me as I was sewing it, but that's okay. And then this is the middle. It, of course, came out looking perfect, but that's fine. All right, so the book is now completely finished. So we're going to turn it over and we're going to fold it in half like that. So then you join your last seam is in the center just there. And then your book is done. So you can now admire your creative genius. So I have, whoops, put a place where you can see it. There we go, that's a bit better. So I have my Christmas book. And then we turn it over. So this was my page one. Remember it was connected to, where is it, our present page. So you now can see with this join in the middle how it no longer is side by side. This is my page two. Then we have our middle, so our elf and our reindeer with his very poor sad ear after I killed it. 
we have Mrs. Claus and we have our awesome present with our hidden bear on the inside and then our back cover and now of course you could always put something on the back cover I haven't uh, but you could very easily put something on there this would be a really nice spot to have a who's it for and who's made it this would be a great spot to stick a label if you wanted to put a label on your book or anything like that I haven't done that but that would be a great place to put it so to recap everything that we've kind of done I guess is for this book it is eight for uh, eight and a half inch squares individual to make up the pieces that you're going to put in your book then you want to put the applique shapes on top and your applique shapes that you use will be, need to be printed smaller so these are printed are between 70 and 75 percent of the actual pattern and you use your normal um, applique process that you would normally do as per the tutorials from Wendy to go on top of these once all that is then done you want to start sewing the sets together so you have your front cover on the right hand side back cover on the left you then have your page one together with page six you have page two and page five together and page three and four together when you sew them to the pages one and six together and pages two and five you want to leave a gap in the center to turn your books out you don't do that for pages three and four or for the back cover it has a straight seam down the middle once you've done that step you are then up to sewing your sets of four together so you have the cover front and back with pages one and two and you have two and five with pages three and four you want to base them together first before you sew them to the batting the batting piece roughly needs to be at least six and a half inches long by eight and a half inches wide it can be bigger once you've then sewn those together making sure that the turning hole is facing on top not underneath because otherwise you won't get into it you then turn it all out top stitch it nicely and then you're ready to sew down the center and that is your finished book ready for gifting I hope this tutorial is helpful if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask hopefully I can make sense of it I have had to do this over a number of days due to how hot it has been here in Australia at the moment I haven't been able to use my sewing room as much as I would like because it doesn't have air conditioning and it is hot in here so hopefully this makes sense if it doesn't please ask and I will happily clarify anything that needs clarifying thank you so much and I hope you enjoy bye